Thank you for watching Mug First Tokyo. This afternoon, I have Mr. Peter Chong with me. I'm sure you all know, but he's one of the most veterans in the Singapore was scene, and it's a pleasure to have him with me. Maybe some people see you for the first time. Maybe you can introduce yourself to for the viewers. Yeah, I've been a collector for a very long time, more than 30 years, uh, based in Singapore. And uh, about 10 years ago, we started this site called Defined.com where we are a collector-focused site. So unlike many other sites where we come from a position of journalism, we don't come from a position, we come from a position of collectors. So we are collectors who are sharing and, and uh, experiencing our experiences with watches. And uh, all my writers, for example, are all collectors first, and then they, be, then they start to write. We do all the, almost all the photography in-house mm -hmm. uh, on our own. Uh, of course, we do use press photographs as well, but uh, a lot of the photographs are in-house. I learned that you work with many big brands as well. We, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're a great photographer yourself. So um, please allow me to ask you how to take good watch photos later in the video. Will sure. Be okay? <laughs> I think many people will, will be interested to uh, learn your tricks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I guess uh, we can go in and okay. then just sit at the desk. So I think I need to start with like how you got yourself into the watch world. It's been a while, I believe. It's been a long time, yes. <laughs> yes. I started always being interested in watches, even when I was a kid, yeah. Uh, but I started really collecting watches about nearly 30 years ago, when I started work working for the first time and using, of course, money that you earn from your first paycheck to buy things. And the first watch uh, which I bought was a mechanical watch, yeah, and that started the journey. And then I started getting involved in the early days in the internet because mm -hmm. I was working for an IT company oh, uh, okay. with, with the internet. Uh, and uh, we started very early with the watch forums, watch forums like uh, timezone.com, which was one of, the, right. uh, one of the original ones. I was one of the early people who participated in it when the server was still in Singapore. And also, well, you mentioned that, that you your first first test was um, mechanical watch. Will it be okay to tell me a little bit more about like what watch it was? Yeah, the first mechanical watch I bought was a Gerard Parigo. So the oh, GP wow. uh, chronograph. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a simple simple chronograph. Uh, I think it's a three three counter. It's uh, it's basically a time movement with a Dubé Dupa uh, chronograph module. So how did you come across it? Like, how did you come across that? Looking around and then talking to people and then going down to the shop. So I bought it from the hourglass here. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, subsequent to that, because of that as well, doing the research, I started getting involved with the internet forums, Times.com. And then I started very early uh, getting interested in uh, a German brand at the time, very new at the time, called Alamen Zone. Oh. So they, at that time, they were really new. It was okay. 90, they came, they, they, they revived and they, they launched a first edition in 94. Mm -hmm. I started with them, maybe, I, not with them, but I started looking at them at about 97, 98. And uh, when you're first introduced to Singapore. So I bought the first piece, the longer one, in about 98. And then I realized that there was no information available on the internet. So I wrote a little uh, website for them. And for some reason, they found out. Uh, and then the, they were happy, the, the CEO at that time, yeah, yeah, the CEO at that time, Gunther Blumlein, called up the local agent and said, Who's this guy? We don't know him. We like to meet him. Oh. So we arranged, and then we, I, then I met him at, at dinner, and then uh, and then he said we'll, we'll support you. We don't have the resources at this point in time to do an internet uh, uh, site, uh, but we we'll support you. And that's how the relationship I had with Alamo and Zone began. So in 98, 99, yeah. And I have a very long relationship with them, helping them build the brand, helping them do a lot of things. Yeah. And by that time, I was working full time. So I had uh, I had a full time job. Uh, this was uh, watches was just a hobby. So I participated in Time Zone as a, kind of a journalist, as a photographer in the, from the early days. Since I know that you run Deployant now, mm -hmm. I need to ask how you got to de develop okay. Deployant. Is that okay? okay? Yeah, sure, yeah? sure. So after a number of years of, of collecting, I decided I wanted to write a book. But uh, if, you run, if you're working full time, and at that time I was running uh, uh, the region for uh, multinational, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just not possible. There's just no time. So I took a two year sabbatical to write the book. Mm -hmm. uh, which I did. So it was 20, that was in twenty ten. I took two years off. I spent wow. maybe five, four months, three and a half, four months in in Germany and traveling the world to write the book. So the book is uh, it's a specific collection within the Langer uh, mm -hmm. collection. So it's, a, it's called Alang and Zone, the polymeric collection. So it's just one line. The book was published twenty eleven, and I decided not to go back to corporate life. 
and uh, in 2013, I started Define with uh, with two friends. Yeah, yeah, and then we started from there. So basically, we we started from quite different uh, from other people. Uh, we start from uh, a basis of passion. We start from basis of interest. We were not we are not journalists. None of us are journalists to start off with. So we don't have the formal journalistic training, mm. but uh, we make up for it. I think we hope. With, uh, with passionate interest in watches. So, um, Peter, I've noticed that there's a beautiful timepiece on your wrist. Can you tell us a little bit about your timepiece? Yeah, sure. The watch that I am wearing is a, it's a piece which is quite uh, interesting. It is a piece which is handmade. It's made by an uh, independent watchmaker called Philippe Dufour. This is simplicity and uh, it is number seven. So it's quite early. Wow. And this is the first, this is the first uh, of the simplicities in 37 millimeters. Because originally when he did the simplicity, I saw it and I wanted, I, I liked the watch, mm -hmm. but it was 34mm. 34mm is quite small mm -hmm. for, for men. For, for a and uh, it yes. took us about a year to persuade him to enlarge the size to 37 And this is the first uh, of the series that have been manufactured at 37mm. We wow. we did this by together I, by coupling together with friends. Mm -hmm. So four of us bought four pieces and he agreed. Oh, agreed. that's so how you support, and, and it's, a, it's a little different from the others because you can see on the on the balance cock, there is the Philip II for logo, which is not oh. present in any other uh, simplicities. Yeah. Oh, wow. Recently, this, this, these pieces have gone really crazy in terms of pricing. I can but, understand uh, that. But I didn't pay that much for it. It was it was expensive at the time, but it was not as crazy as it was today. F Philip II has, uh, has been uh, a very interesting character in the in the independent watchmaking scene. He's kind of seen as the great grandfather of independent watchmaking, even mm -hmm. in those days. Uh, his first watch was a uh, Grand and Petit Sonnery. Uh, the first time implemented in the wristwatch. So it's the first time ever because Grand Petit stories have been around for hundreds of years. But when he made his, it was only it was the first time it was done in a wristwatch. And then he made this very complicated piece called uh, the duality. He only made nine of them, two escapements driven by a, a differential. Uh, very complicated. And in fact, his logo at that time was uh, horology complication, complicated uh, watches. But then he decided that it's kind of tough uh, just making very high and very expensive uh, single piece or two piece watches because mm. those watches take up to a year to manufacture one piece because everything is done by hand by himself. Yeah. Uh, so he decided to make series production and that's why he yeah. came up with this idea of a simplicity. So the simpler, he reduced the watch making to the simplest form. So all the elements of the Valet de Joux, mm -hmm. uh, where he's from, uh, watch making principles are embodied in this, in this particular watch. So like uh, the use of German silver, rodent plated, uh, gold chatons, very white Anglash uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Geneva stripes being ruled onto, yeah. the, on, onto the watch and the finishing is done to an extremely high level. In those days, he was working alone. Uh, so when he was making this watch, for example, in the early days, he was making alone. Then various people joined him and left, joined him and left, including his own daughter. And uh, he completed the series, approximately 210 pieces. And now they are reintroducing again some of the new pieces, but they are slightly different. So, for example, recently he introduced a piece for the, his own foundation, mm -hmm. which has got uh, no second hand and uh, one millimeter smaller. So, 36, uh, 30, this is 37, uh, one millimeter larger, I think. I, well, one millimeter, so I forgot. And, uh, and that was uh, introduced for the foundation. I'm really yeah. happy to rediscover all yeah. those stories. Yeah, so, so this is quite a special piece, yeah. Yeah. And this is number number seven. Uh, it's it's one of the more photograph pieces, so people already know about this. I don't have any issues sharing it uh, because uh, it's one of the early pieces. I'm sure Mr. Dufour appreciates you to wear it. I think he does. He remembers the the old people who were bought for him and had believed in him in the early days. Because even though it was not the crazy price that you get today, uh, it was still quite expensive in those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of us were we had to take a a, a leap of faith. To, to, to buy the watch because this, this watch is purchased on a subscription basis mm -hmm. meaning we pay a deposit before he could start work yeah, yeah. and then when he delivered the watches we pay him in full and yeah, he delivered the watches uh, about a year after oh yeah, so it took a year and that's part of the process of working with independent because you know the person who is making a watch not a brand not a yeah. company but a real person who is making the watch we get involved in the, the process because during this there were some headaches as well uh, the plates, for example, were cut by CNC machine and the first wow. se series of plates were badly done and he rejected them. Uh, 
uh, losing probably about two months of time. I'm really happy that both of the trust from both of your side had like um, made a beautiful piece and I'm able to see it. Well, I've just remembered, but like you're an expert on watches, but you also take really great photographs. Thank you. I hope it's not too much to ask, but maybe you could give us a little one or two small tricks. Well, okay. we can use like our smartphones and take a good photo, maybe basic okay. things. Okay, one, one, one place I normally, I, I like to take photographs in uh, using a smartphone, like uh, like an iPhone, is mm -hmm. inside the car. Really? Uh, car. It's, it's quite interesting because the car has got at least windows surrounding you, True. and there's light coming in from all directions. Uh, a little trick that I use is uh, for a wrist shot is that you, you you aim the phone at your wrist, and then I zoom in a little bit. Mm. So I use, for example, I use the iPhone, and I use the one time zoom to go in, two times zoom to go in a little bit. So I eliminate a little bit of the environment, go as close as possible. Uh, the next trick is to wait until the wrist and the hand holding the camera are still and okay. the camera is a quiet focus because a lot of people just snap and then the wire has not the camera didn't didn't really focus Ooh. and you get something blur yeah but if you wait for a little while the camera eventually will acquire focus be a bit right. patient it's, and then take the photograph okay maybe i should just try it right now sure can i yeah so yeah i i get some light i, I, think, this window. I think this is fine this is fine and yep yeah you I, zoom in a little bit yeah and, and then, then wait for a little while a little while and then for it to focus and then you can yeah and then just focus, shoot it yeah yeah i think that's okay yeah N okay. nice watch thank you i just brought a little watches for the for the background purpose this is like my second day in singapore and i have to leave tomorrow could you recommend me some places i should visit it could be watch things doesn't have to be related okay. what do you like to do while you're here well in, in singapore we like two things we like shopping and we like eating <laughs> So, so there's a lot of shops and uh, many of the shops are, are, are quite good for watches. People like, uh, if you like interested in the high-end pieces, SHH, the Sinsia mm -hmm. Autorology, there's a special, there's a branch uh, where they focus only on independence. They are in uh, Marina Bay Sands. Hourglass, for example, has got many branches around. These are the watch places we normally go to. There, of course, there are a lot of boutiques here. Uh, yeah, there are. There are a lot of boutiques here. And of course, we love food. Well, we love Japanese food as well, so I love, oh, I love the food in Japan. Uh, but here as well, food is good. Street food is very, very good. I know. Uh, everywhere, it depends on what you like. You like spicy stuff, you like local stuff, you like... Uh... So we got a good variety here. So you can eat for very, very cheap. Like the cheapest Michelin star in the world, star in mm -hmm. the world is uh, five US dollars for a, a meal. Uh, <laughs> if you're interested, I can tell you where it is. Uh, or you can, you can also eat, have one meal for one person at 600 US dollars. So we, we, we have a big range. Here. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing yeah. because you have to go. I think we could probably wrap it up and finally ask you for like a short warm message for our fans and the viewers of the Watch Spirits Tokyo mm. and uh, Watch Lovers internationally. Watch collecting has been very a very interesting hobby and it's just and for now for me now it's more than just a hobby. Of course, uh, it's kind of a small business, a retirement business. We don't really make a lot of money from it because that's not our focus. Our focus is to share the experiences, to share the passion and the interest. Uh, to share our insights because we have had me and my team we have had the privilege of knowing a lot of people in the business talking to a lot of people in business going behind the scenes in the factories in switzerland in germany in france in japan uh, and understanding what is happening behind the scene and uh, we love to share this i've made through the 30 over years that i've been collecting watches i've made many many lifelong friends very interesting a very good community sometimes uh, of course sometimes it's also peppered with some politics and some difficult parts but uh, we, we prefer to to, to, to get, look at the positive part and uh, for those who are new well welcome to the welcome to the world of watch collecting and those who have been here uh, hope to see you somewhere sometime maybe in the Geneva or in Tokyo or wherever right and then if we want to you know find what you're doing uh, lately we can always look at the deployment yes yes yes, yes. the website we publish every day uh, at deploying.com uh, we have of course also the, the standard uh, social media platforms we are, we are Instagram we are in Facebook and uh, we publish every day so there's some content every day but during show at show time, we can publish up to six, seven times a day. Oh, that's so a lot. It's quite heavy. Uh, but this during watches from Mondays, for example, six, seven times a day. Uh, but most of the time, it's once a day. In the evenings, 9.30 Singapore time. Great. So I look forward to, you know, getting more articles from you. Thank you. Um. So, yeah, thank you so much. If you visit Japan, please, please call me up. Okay. And then I would like to uh, show you some places maybe you don't know yet. Thank you so much. Can thank we wait? Thank you. So thank you so much. Bye.
Thank you.